Kara Shalom, welcome to our watercolor journey. Contrast and counterchange in painting are just as important as tone and composition. In this painting, we will show you how color contrasts and hard and soft edges can give your painting depth and interest. The materials used are listed in the description below. We tried a different kind of paper this time called Hanemule Expressions. It is a 100% cotton cold pressed paper, but the tooth of ore surface of the paper is a bit smoother than Ash or Saunders Waterford and the sizing is on the surface, so the paper behaves a bit different from our usual papers. It is a bit of a challenge to work with surface sizing if you are used to internally sized paper, but in general the paper behaves very well and can take quite a lot of attention. If you are interested to know more about what you can do with this paper, there is a link to a video by Willow Rose Arlen in the description below. On the palette, we have Prussian Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Cadmium Yellow and Raw Sienna. There is also a blue-grey premix of Prussian Blue and Alizarin Crimson and a dark premix of Blue, Red and Yellow. Colour alternatives are listed below. It is helpful to make a light pencil sketch of your composition. It helps you to plan your elements and to make sure that there is balance and harmony. Here we have the horizon just below the middle line of the paper. Some tall trees to the sides and a stream that tapers from very narrow on the horizon line to becoming wider towards the foreground. The paper is on a block and placed on a file to slant it at about 30 degrees. This will help the paint flow to create a natural looking sky. Use a large mop or a hockey to wet the entire paper thoroughly. Keep in mind that the atmosphere where you are will greatly influence how your paper reacts. If it is hot, your paper will dry quicker. If it's cold and wet out, your paper will dry slower. You will need more water to wet the paper if it's hot. Use a mid-sized brush to add some raw sienna to the sky and next to the stream in the foreground. Raw sienna will not easily turn green when you add blue, provided that you don't fiddle with it too much. Keep your brush strokes light and gently help the paint to blend into the wetness on the surface. Gently add some blue to the sky area, allowing it to blend and flow into the moisture on the paper. Leave some lighter patches to resemble clouds. Dip the tip of the brush into the darker blue mix made from Prussian blue and alizarin crimson and add light touches of the color just above the horizon line to start with the middle ground. Add some raw sienna. Here the raw sienna is worked into the blue and now it does create a green. Don't clean the brush. Use the blues and yellows on the palette to add the bushes in the back. The brush still contains some of the previous pigment, so it creates interesting color variations, which you won't get if you use a squeaky clean brush each time. Don't be afraid to double dip your brush. This means, for example, that you use the tip to pick up a bit of red 
and then a bit of blue at the same time and then paint. This color combination on your brush will produce a nice grayish purple on the paper. Because the surface is still wet, the paints will spread and blend on their own as well. If you keep a light touch, then it won't go out of control. Make sure though that your brush isn't too wet or it will cause blooms. Dab the brush on a paper towel if you think it's too wet. Your mixes should also be a bit stronger or thicker than the consistency of the water on the paper to avoid runbacks. Keep adding the colors from your palette to add some interest and variation in the background. Now you can move to the foreground and add some of the blue and a bit of gray to start defining the terrain and the stream. Add the colors from the palette in soft strokes. Vary the length of the brush strokes to create undulations in the terrain. Press harder with the brush if you want broader lines and lift the brush to use only the tip if you want finer lines. Add a bit of blue and raw sienna to the stream to define it a bit more. Remember that you have to work rather fast as you don't want the paper to dry yet. If your paper is too dry by this time, allow it to dry completely before you carry on with this next part. Once it has dried, you can wet the entire surface again with long light strokes before you add the trees. Don't press too hard when you wet the paper again because you might lift the layers underneath. Okay, so we're on the wet paper still. We are now going to start adding the tall trees in the background. Start high up on the picture plane and with the tip of the brush add some purple made by double dipping into the red and the blue. Blend it on your palette so that you don't have too much of one color on your brush. Then lightly touch the tip of the brush to the wet paper. It is very important that you keep a very light touch here as you want the paint to create soft edges. These trees will be in the background so the soft edges will make them recede. Leave open spaces for the sky to shine through. Add a few touches of a stronger purple mix to add variation. Follow the same principle for all the tall trees in the back. Blend the color into the horizon line as you go down. Add some bushes to the right by dipping the brush into some yellow without cleaning it first. The purple residue mixed with the added yellow will create an interesting muted green. You can see that the paper has dried a bit here, so the bush on the right has a hard edge as opposed to the soft feathery lost and found edges of the trees where the paint is spread into the wet surface. This makes the bush come more forward, pushing the trees into the background. You can now build the terrain a bit more by adding the colors from the palette. Keep it light 
and minimalistic. This paper is not stretched, so it makes small hills and valleys. If you make a uniform background wash, this trait can be a hassle as the pigment will pool in the valleys. However, on this painting it isn't a problem. Allow the painting to dry thoroughly. You will see that the paper goes completely flat once dry and there are no issues with paint blobs or pools. Now you can use a rigger or a fine tipped brush to add the tree trunks. Keep in mind that these trees are far away, so the trunks will be a muted brown grey with very little detail. You can mix the brownish colour by adding a bit of red and yellow to the purple mix. Draw a broken line for the trunk. Start with the tip of the brush at the top and press harder as you go down. The bottom of the trunk will be thicker, making the tree look higher. You will also create the illusion of dimension if you do this, as it looks as if there are leaves behind and in front of the trunk. Lightly add some branches here and there. Again, make broken lines and keep them as thin as possible. Add some raw sienna and a touch of red to your purple mix for the bushes in front of the trees. Add a bit of water to help the paint spread. Use the colours on the palette to create variation. Wet the area above the bush slightly to help the colour spread. Blend the water in with a brush so that you don't get a hard water line here. Then add a few drops of colour into the wet area. Keep building the middle ground in this way. To ensure a smooth transition between the middle and foreground, you can add a bit of water to the bottom edge of your bushes and spread it lightly. This will bring some of the colour from the bushes into the foreground. 
This harmonizes the colors from the back to the front and creates unity in your composition. Build the terrain in front in the same way. Add paint and spread it with water in some places and in other places you can add water first and then add the paint. The two techniques also create variety and will give the counter change of soft against hard edges. You will notice that the cooler blue hues recede and the warmer raw sienna looks almost too bright in contrast. The warmer colors in front also seem to lift the foreground to create depth. Enhance the stream by mixing a pale green and then double dipping the brush in the blue and yellow. To create the illusion of icy pools of water on either side of the stream, you can add some blue. This will be repeated on the right side later so that it looks as if the trees are reflected on the ice. Allow the painting to dry again. Use the dark mix to lightly outline the stream. Keep the lines broken and vary the thickness to create shadows along the stream. Add a few darker areas to the terrain for shadows and to make the area look more natural. Your light is coming from the middle in the back, so the shadows should be on the outsides of the tree trunks. Add a bit of the dark mix very lightly to those areas. Here the trunks are shaded by the bushes, so the bases of these trees are darker. Keep adding shadows to define the terrain. You can use the belly of the rigger and some of the drier paint from your palette to create a dry brush effect for grasses and shrubs. Add another layer of paint in front of the bushes. These will have hard edges, which again will contrast nicely with a soft background.
Make sure that you keep the terrain on opposite sides of the stream straight. This helps to flatten the foreground and to make your stream look more natural. If the line at the top of the stream is crooked, it will look as if the stream goes upward. Don't fiddle too much with your painting. It is difficult to know when to stop though. Stand away from your painting and look at it critically. Does it have light, middle and dark values? Does it have interest? Did you keep the light source in mind? Is there enough contrast? If you feel that you can answer positively on these questions, then stop. A light, soft painting like this one can easily be spoiled by overworking it. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you again soon. Vaya con Dios.